restart this. Okay, and let's launch her. seconds wow I want to talk about two things the park it's on the transmission and the parking brake that maybe some of you don't even know was down here there's a parking brake right here now that's like remember the old emergency brake we used to uh, emergency brake we used to pull up here and I had a Corvette that had one a couple of them or it was over here, it was over the head, or over here for a while, on one side and one the other. Anyway, one side and the other. But uh, this is kind of like the same thing. In other words, you push this button, it clamps the rear wheels, and uh, this one over here is like parking in an automatic transmis transmission. And when you hit park, um, you usually want to put your emergency brake. I used to call it the emergency brake. I'm dating myself here. <laughs> um, and so that's 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 uh, another thing you would do too, especially if you're on an incline. Like I'm on a little incline right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the car, turn off my radio, and notice, if you will, that uh, I'm in park, but the emergency brake is not on now. Uh, if I were normally when I was going to shut off the car, I were going to shut off the car, uh, and I'm on an incline, I put it in park. Let me see. I, let's pretend I was already in drive, but I want to go into park. So the little red P tells me I'm in park, and then I'll go over and hit the emergency brake and watch my screen. It says park brake set. And you'll see that that little park word is up there too. That's very important. Okay. So now. I'm good. I shut the car off. Everything's fine. The little park light is still up there, though. You notice that? So then I do some things. I come around. Okay, now I'm getting ready to leave. Um, what The one thing you don't want to do is to drive the car with the park brakes set because it's going to, you know, obviously wear out your, your uh, <laughs> pads. The car does enough to get you out of it sometimes, but not always. So let me show you so I I come in here I start the car it's gonna tell me right away parking brake is on okay um, but I'm stupid I'm not paying attention and I put it in drive let's see I'm gonna try to put it in drive anyway and I am in drive oh, the parking brake is set now if I take my foot off of the brake and I touch the gas pedal there's a little hesitation, and all of a sudden the parking brake was released. So it's helping you, especially if you like you're on a hill like I am here, a little bit of an incline. Uh, it's helping me take off without the car rolling back, which was just kind of nice. Um, but sometimes on a flat surface you can leave, and you, I was using it the other day, and you can uh, you can actually drive a little bit with the parking. Uh, the emergency brake or whatever you want to call it the parking brake still on the last thing you want to do is push this damn thing when you're driving I am not going to experiment with that to see what happens but anyway just keep in mind that you have a parking or an emergency brake over here on the left and then you have a parking brake over here I'll put it in park you have a parking brake over here what I would do the normal the normal sequence is to hit the parking brake and hit your emergency brake or whatever you want to call it this is brake set the electronic brake and now everything stops right where it is it doesn't roll back any you notice when you just put it in pack only a lot of times the car will roll back a little bit you're banging you're banging on the uh, on, on the mechanics inside the car and I don't think it's a good thing so anyway keep in mind ready to go Hit the park brake again, it shuts off. I have to step on the brake to do it. That way you don't roll back either. And then, now you can put it in drive and away you go. Okay? So we're good to, we're good to fly. Some of you might remember I did a 
video on my C706 on how to jack it up and this and that, but I haven't done one. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've done one on the C8. Um, but the first thing you need is a jack. <clears throat> and it really doesn't matter where you buy the jack. This one here I've had a long time. Probably had it about 15 years. But uh, it has a funny little uh, <clears throat> jacking puck. If you go to the uh, uh, any hockey rink, uh, after so many games, they throw these hockey pucks up. They just throw them in the trash. So you could go to a hockey rink and they'll give you free hockey pucks rather than throw them in the trash. They give them to you. And if you not, might notice, I got a whole small hole I drilled in here and I put a screw right three through here and the sc screw comes up on the other side. I got a couple of nuts and bolts on here just to get it so it uh, there's a little uh, bit of the thread left on the top and, and this is fairly small and this will go up into the hole. You know, when you jack it up, this will go into the jacking. This will go into the jacking hole and uh, just jack it right up. The other thing you want to do is look for a jack that's not too tall, especially the front part, so it can get under uh, the car. On the inside of the tire, a lot of crap collects. And I think, I think I've think i shown you, I, I think I showed you my brush, maybe I didn't. But I have a brush over here, here it is. I have a brush I use that looks like this, and I put it in between the uh, slots on the wheel, and I go all the way in, way, way in, and I clean. And it does a pretty, I would say, a pretty good job. It doesn't do a great job, but it does a pretty good job. So um, so what I like to do about once a year is I take each wheel off, and I take it out, and I turn it upside down, and I put a piece of wood under it, and I clean the inside of the wheel with a scrub brush and it gets a lot of the dirt and crap off the wheel. Now you might say, what are you doing that for? Well, you know what can happen? What can happen is um, if, you, if you leave the dirt in there and it starts to accumulate inside the wheel, depending on how much crap has been flipped up in there, it could affect and throw out of balance the wheels on your car. So it's a good idea to take them off once a year and clean them real well. Or if you've got a good brush, you can get all around in there. That helps too. And when I when I clean the inside of the wheels, I use, I like this stuff right here. Super clean, dissolves grease, and uh, super easy, super fast. I spray the inside of the wheels when I have the wheels off, and they're upside down and they're laying out there. I, I spray, I spray with this, and then I take a brush like this, which has pretty good bristles on it, and I go in all around the inside of the wheel, and it really cleans up the wheel really, really well. So this, I'm sure there are other stuff you can use, but this seems to work really well for me. But um, you might have something you like, by all means use it, as long as it doesn't uh, harm the finish. On I'm lying down on the ground here, and I'm going to take this camera and show you where the hole is for the um, jack. And I'm going to put my finger right in the hole right there. Can you see that? Can you see that? And that, I put the green tape this right in front of the hole so you could see it. That is the hole that you put your jacking puck or whatever jacking block or whatever you're going to use to jack up the car. Just to put a flat round block around here or a hockey puck or something. I, I don't like that because it could slide around. That's why I have the hockey puck that you saw. It looks a lot better because it's got the screw that comes up here and goes into the hole and it keeps it from sliding. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep from any sliding going on. So. Um, I think that'll work pretty good, but that's the hole and notice it's all long. It's not round Don't get caught up in some of the holes under here that are round because if you get caught up <laughs> if, if you get the wrong ones, you're gonna You're gonna get uh, you're gonna have some problems and you want to stay away from any problems Jacking up this car. So what I'm gonna do now is put the jack under the car using the hockey puck and getting it in that hole and you notice I have enough, just enough room to get the hockey puck under here, which is really a good thing. 
I found the hole that I want. I want to get the puck lined up with that particular hole. And that's right about there. That should be good. And we'll give the jack a couple of pumps. And I see that the ho hockey puck is lean. It's on there, but it's off to the side a little bit. So I wanna, I wanna make sure this is centered as much as I can on the jack. I'll tighten it up a little more. Bingo, I'm ready to jack the car. You look at this, you get an idea of where the jack is in relationship to the car. And that's where you want to be going, right there. Okay? That gives you an idea. Fronts, another story, but it's the same, same story, really. So it's not a big deal. But again, look on your owner's manual, and you can see exactly where these go. If you'll notice on the floor, I have three instruments. One on the right is sort of like a breaker bar, and there's a socket on the center, and then on the left, there's my torque wrench, okay? Or my torque bar. And one other thing I want to mention here is the socket I have. It is a 22 millimeter socket. And that's your one you want for the C8. Also has a plastic outer covering and a plastic inner pot there so it keeps from uh, it keeps you from uh, scuffing up the whole outside of your rim. And also when you're tightening, make sure you do a star pattern like one, three, five, two, four, one, three, five, two, four, and tighten it up that way. And what I usually do is I go maybe to 100 pounds the first time, and then to 140 the second time and have your tire on the floor a little bit so you can get some grip and the tires are spinning when you're trying to tighten the lug nuts. But uh, that's the way I do it. There might be other ways to do it. I'm sure that work fine too. But um, just be careful. Otherwise, if you don't do a star pattern, you might say, well, what's going to happen? Well, one of the things you can do is warp one of your rotors. And you don't want to do that. Uh, you want to make sure that the, you know, that you torque the, the lug nuts correctly or you run into problem. Last week I got a nail on my tire, it was right about here. Couldn't plug it, had to buy a new tire, $500 later. Bring it to the dealership, the dealer mounts the tire, and I bought the tire from the dealership. He mounts the tire, puts it on the, uh, gives it back to me, I take it home and put it on the car and oh lo and behold I have these beautiful civil wheel weights well if you look at the wheel weights on the rest of the car they're all a dark gray and they blend in nicely with the car so I was really discouraged and I asked a few people and they said ah oh, you know I thought maybe I was being too anal about the car and everybody except for one person I think who suggested I paint them black um, was telling me, you know, that I should really complain about it and see if you can get it fixed. So I said, well, let's make a, I feel like Marty Hall, let's make a deal. So I tried to make, you know, I meet them halfway. I'll supply the wheel weights, you put them on and uh, re rebalance the wheel and let's work it that way. So sure enough, he was good enough to do that and these wheel weights are coming off and I'm putting some black ones on here and it's gonna look a heck of a lot better I'm happy, he's happy, everybody's happy, and we worked out a nice deal. So sometimes compromise uh, means bending a little yourself uh, and the, and the uh, service manager bending a little, and everybody's happy.